Hello, everyone. Welcome to our show, Creative World. I'm your host, Shin Matsuba. We'll be introducing some amazing, talented people, chatting with them in a one on one interview, hearing their stories, picking their brains, looking through the kaleidoscope of the creative world. Today's creative world is music. Today's guest comes from the world of music. She's a music writer, vocalist, and trombone player, as well as educator. Her work can be found in major productions, such as Hitachi, Russell Stover Chocolates, Amazon, Univision, and others. From Los Angeles, California, please welcome Yoshie Nakayama. Hello, Yoshie. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Good? Nervous. <laughs> Nervous? Come on. You just have to have conversation, you know? Mm -hmm. Just please have a seat. Thank you. All right? So first of all, you're originally from Japan and now based in LA, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what brought you to the US? Yeah, so um, I graduated from this Japanese music college called Kunitachi College of Music. Okay. And I learned uh, music education major there. Wow. And after the graduation, I had this job that's mm -hmm. nothing to do with music for 10 years. 10 years. And during wow. those, that 10 years, I was singing in a cappella ensemble or like playing trombone in big bands. After the 10 years, mm -hmm. I decided I'm not going to spend the same way for another 10 years and decided to become a professional musician. Nice. And then college that I went first was all about classical music. Okay. And uh, my passion and my interest at that time was not into classical music anymore. And I wanted to learn contemporary music. So I decided to go to choral camp in wow. Connecticut. And it was really inspiring because all the participating singers mm -hmm. are from teens to elderly people with even ventilator besides wow. him. So how long was it? How long was the year? It was a week. It was a week. It was very nice because all the singers, mm -hmm. all those diverse people right. united there just to sing for a week together. So that's really nice. That's I couldn't fantastic. think of any occasion like that in Japan. Mm -hmm. And also there's this one of the instructors who was there who's also a professor at Berkeley College of Music. Yumiko Matsuoka, who actually invited me to solicit me to go to the camp. Nice. And then she, you know, suggested me to go to Berkeley mm -hmm. to learn contemporary music and writing a cappella, which wow. I was into. Right, right. And so right after the camp, I started researching about college, which I never even imagined or dreamed about mm. going again. And then eight months later, I got accepted by the college. And Ooh, one year after the <laughs> thank you, and one year after the camp, I was in Boston, about to start my second college life and my U.S. life. Nice, yeah. nice. So, could you tell us about your uh, experiences, you know, in in Berkeley? It's such a special atmosphere filled with music lovers from all over the world. Right. It's uh, so forty percent of the students are international. Everything there was really fresh to me. I was already over thirty years old there you know, dealing with 18 years old students who's just graduated from high school. So it was very inspiring and fun, just pure fun yeah, to be yeah, yeah. filled with music learning opportunities from uh, mentors who are award winning, who work with Beyonce, or who work in Broadway productions. Wow. Big and names. Who, exactly. And when ours, literally, I was a student there, they would announce who won or how many of the uh, graduates or current uh, professor or instructor won the Grammys or wow. Tonys. Oh, <laughs> like it looks like we got pictures. Yes, oh, yes. Fun? Trombone playing picture mm -hmm. uh, with three suit wearing right, Japanese. Right, yeah, yeah. That's at the Massachusetts State House. Uh, nice. It's in December. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Japanese emperor hold a reception every December mm -hmm. over there. And I got invited to perform the Japanese national anthem with wow. uh, fellow Berkeley <laughs> brass players. Yeah, it was very nerve wracking like now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so you graduated Berkeley and now you're based in LA, right? Yes. So what kind of production do you work on right now? Yeah, so uh, I compose or arrange for concerts, or live performance, uh, recordings, mm -hmm. and sometimes film music or TV ads, uh, ensembles for uh, uh, my friends in Boston or Mexico, Canada, Moscow, Norway sometimes. Wow. Yeah, so it's very fascinating. Very yeah, it's very nice to, you know, 
to have the connection all over the world, right, resulting right. from going to Berkeley. Right, right, right. Yeah. So this is the you recording the Hinamatsuri, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> Let's take a look. Yes. Yeah, that's my apartment room. Oh, it's your apartment. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> wow, that's fantastic. <laughs> like, what's your process like? You know, you create things and then you write songs and you, you so uh, sing as well. Mm -hmm. And what's your process like in general, like from start to finish? When I compose, which means which when I start from zero, right. then I rely on... Uh, my ear and my feeling. So right. I, I would use this music creating software and just, you know, basically ex explore with piano. And of course, there, if there's client's request, I try to follow it and I try to, you know, if they have, uh, let's say, video that they want me to put the music on, mm -hmm. then I'll just tell them what kind of music I would like, if it's exciting music or fast tempo or these instruments I would think about. Right. And then once we agree on the concept, then I start exploring with piano, and I would think think about uh, the time, groove. Wow, uh, like key. a lot of work. <laughs> but oh it's fun. God. It's fun though. Right, right, right. Yeah, and then you know melody, harmony, mm -hmm. and then um, yeah, and then from there uh, I would start uh, enriching, mm -hmm. emphasizing the instrumentation. Right. Uh, if there's a request, I'll follow the request mm -hmm. requested instruments. You gotta be sometimes really flexible. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty cool. <laughs> so you do a lot of stuff, different kinds of stuff, but you're also an educator, right? Yes, I, yeah, I teach piano and singing mm -hmm. and music theory to kids. In the States and in Japan as well? Uh, well, basically in States, uh, okay. because I, I would just visit to their place because I can't invite them over to my place. Right. So yeah, I would inv uh, visit them and uh, yeah, teach piano. But after the situation has changed, right, right, yeah, right. I've been, you know, Zoom teaching, Zoom Skype teaching. teaching. That's right, technology. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's yeah right. thankfully. Wow, that's, that's fantastic. <laughs> and then you work internationally. So what's the most to you, what's the most fun and attractive part for you mm -hmm. about working internationally? It's always fun to see a very different standard. So working internationally always, of course, there's always, you know, like general manner that like you have to be on time, you right. know, you have to be replying, re responding to emails and communication, of course. But at the same time, when you, uh, when it comes to the creative part or when you communicate with someone who's not grown up in your, in your culture, then they have different standards. Right. And that's really refreshing and inspiring and challenging at the same time. But right. when you uh, overcome the challenge, then you feel really strong accomplishment that right. you, can, you cannot really find anywhere else, I, I, at least for me. Right, right, right. So right, right. yeah, that's what I find. It's fantastic. Yeah. Have you seen any like, with the international work, you know, the any like hardships or a cultural difference? Did you have any hard, mm -hmm. you know, like hard time? Not really hard time, hard time. But uh, when I worked on this Univision product uh, production, that's called uh, Rise Up as One. That was right before the uh, president election term mm -hmm. uh, back in 2016 right. in San Diego. I was the music producer of multi-Latin Grammy winning artist called uh, Alejandro Sanz, okay. who's from Spain. So you know, he's a Spanish artist and everyone who speaks Spanish love, loves his music. And I think he's won the Latin Grammy Awards like 20 times. <laughs> so I was the only non-Spanish speaking person in the production team. <laughs> wow. And the leader of the production team was Berkeley professor who's from Spain. Okay. And he had uh, one more music producer mm -hmm. who's from Mexico. And uh, so, yeah, I, I was, you know, pro, uh, producing the music for the band, for the for the artist who's picked from Berkeley community. Right. And, you know, after the rehearsal, they would just start talking in Spanish. Right, right, right. right. And then I always, I was always concerned, uh, do I need to That's get right. involved yeah, in this meeting or, you, or they're just chatting Should I just something? go in there or just stay back here a yeah. little bit to watch? So you work internationally, so... Let's talk about this year. Now with the unprecedented time, what kind of productions or activities are you currently working on? 
uh, I released some videos on my YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. It's an a cappella production um, that's an uh, alternated lyric of this song by the Jacksons. It's called Blame It on the Boogie. But I made it, you know, I made, I differentiated the lyrics. And uh, my friends from uh, basically Berkeley community from Boston, uh, Moscow, Mexico, Canada, mm -hmm. uh, you know, all over the world joined me uh, singing. And then, yeah, but uh, when at the beginning, I'm like, yeah, m m m now everyone's locked down, getting, you know, staying inside. Right, right. Everyone has time. It's, it's just, you know, a cappella with 16 people. Right. With nothing too much. And then I did that four times. And then oh my <laughs> I really God. merged wow. those. Yeah. And then, you know, as a result, it, as uh, 16 singers singing in one video. Fantastic. <laughs> So you're doing that great, you know, project right now. And then for, for example, like next year, three years later, five mm -hmm. years later from now. Yeah. What is your next step then? What are you seeing your future self? So after five years, 10 years later, mm -hmm. I would love to see myself involved in uh, award winning stuff. Nice. <laughs> I came to the U.S. to mm -hmm. do something big and, you know, things, big stuff happened already, right. lady, but I'm still, you know, there's always who doesn't want a big thing, you know? Right. If you're, especially in LA, mm -hmm. then you want something great to happen, right? But uh, yes, yeah, so, uh, there's this project that I'm one of the co-founder uh, of, and it's called Songs for World Peace. Okay. I started this with my Berkeley friends. Nice. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so it's basically a global initiative with musicians from all over the world to create the song uh, about world peace and share the song and uh, the old songs are created in their native languages. So uh, this year we did it uh, International Day of Peace, which is September 21st. And yeah, please check out <laughs> all check the songs. <laughs> yeah, you can enjoy, uh, I, I believe you can enjoy all the songs that mm -hmm. are created. You know, it's about how, how people, let's say in Kenya, think about word peace. Right. And people in India think about or how they express their, right. you know, different inter interpretation. Exactly about word peace. So it's really nice and it's all written in their native language. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, all everything behind a country and language is, you know, their culture. Uh, but we also had this, you know, songs from surprising country to me that was sounding really sad and struggle and um, not happy at all. So that's really, you know, again, like working internationally, it's if I stayed in Japan, I never really think about doing this kind of project True. or I even, you know, knowing the people in the countries have, you know, all the struggles. And I mean, I knew those struggles kind of from the TV news and stuff, but when you, know someone actually from those countries, those news gets really real. Right. Right. So that's something, you know, we, we try to deliver our, you know, or even for the people who watch, who listen to the songs of World Peace from our website, then, you know, we wish that they would think about World Peace even for, you know, while they listen to the songs. Right. Well, there, yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. So I definitely look forward to seeing more, more of your work, you know? So one last question. Sure. You ready? Yes. 